This is the do-it-yourself guide to business buying. Today, we're talking about the buy-sell agreement. Welcome, business buyers. What is our goal with this video, buy-sell agreement? I want to discuss how the buy-sell agreement fits into the business buying cycle. The buy-sell agreement really is the culmination of the entire business buying cycle, but ironically, it's one of our shortest videos. Why is that? Well, the LOI, the letter of intent, that's really where we negotiate the business agreement. That's where all the negotiations, the back and forth, the offers, the counter offers, et cetera. And we've covered that already in great detail. The buy-sell agreement, that's where we're going to translate the hard negotiated business agreement into a legal agreement. And that's the job of our legal counsel. So I'm not going to get between you and your lawyer when it comes to drafting that buy-sell agreement. In addition, our next video is all about resolving final issues, which covers many of the closing issues that I do want to address. So that's going to limit this video to 12 basic points on the buy-sell agreement. Let's get started. Number one, the name of the agreement. I have been calling it the buy-sell agreement through this entire video series, but that is just a placeholder name. Another placeholder name is the definitive purchase agreement or the purchase agreement. The actual name is either or. It's either an asset purchase agreement, an APA, if you're buying the assets of the business, or it's a share purchase agreement or an SPA if you're buying the shares of the agreement. So APA or SPA, asset purchase agreement or share purchase agreement, depending upon whether you're acquiring the assets or the shares. And by the way, the agreements are quite different. Now, I do have a full video presentation on the difference between buying assets and buying shares. So I would suggest you take a look at that if you haven't already. Number two, who prepares the agreement? Well, it's typically prepared by the buyer side legal counsel. I've worked on a couple transactions where the seller side prepared the buy-sell agreement, but it's usually the buyer side. I mean, it worked out fine with the seller preparing it. Typically, the buyer legal counsel drafts the buy-sell agreement and we get comments and change requests from the seller's legal counsel or lawyer. Number three, we want to make sure we use a lawyer with business buying experience, preferably with leveraged buyout experience if you are leveraging the assets of the Target Co. to fund a closing payment. That, of course, means you're borrowing against the assets of the business that you want to buy to raise money to give the seller a closing payment. If your transaction includes that, yeah, it really helps to have a lawyer who's familiar with how those transactions work rather than a family friend who might normally be a family law lawyer, for example. Probably not the best idea. Number four, how long does it take to get the buy-sell agreement signed? I would say typically somewhere between two and six weeks, roughly. Of course, responsiveness is going to factor in as well. When comments are made, how long does the round trip take? The longer that gets dragged out, of course, the closer you're going to be to six weeks. And the other thing that factors in is if the letter of intent was thin on the terms you included. Sometimes strategically, we do come up with an LOI that's a bit light and we save things for the buy-sell agreement and we do it on purpose. We do it strategically. But if that was the case, then of course, you are going to be closer to six weeks than the two weeks. Number five, are new deal points introduced in the buy-sell agreement? And of course, the answer is yes. Some points were likely not negotiated in the letter of intent. For example, the language we use in the reps and warranty section. And of course, a lot of the legal contention that happens when we're negotiating this kind of stuff is around the language itself. So that, again, is something that you're going to have to discuss with your legal counsel. Number six, your counsel needs direction on the approach to take to the buy-sell agreement. I think we want to give clear instructions and we recommend that the seller advise their lawyer with clear instructions as well, that their job is to convert or translate the business agreement into an enforceable legal agreement. We're not asking them to renegotiate it. So we want to limit the introduction of additional legal elements to those that are only strictly necessary. We don't want to start another round of negotiations. Number seven, your counsel needs direction on risk allocation in the buy-sell agreement. Lawyers, because that's really what they're trained to do, often add language to minimize risk. They're protecting your interest. They want to push the risk to the seller. Well, of course, seller's counsel is doing the exact opposite. They want to push all the risk to the buyer. And if you have two aggressive lawyers on either side, you know, taking that approach, I'll guarantee you, you're not going to get a signed buy-sell agreement and a closed transaction. So you need to discuss those kinds of items before they get arbitrarily added to your buy-sell. This whole idea of risk minimization and risk allocation is super important. Number eight, the length and complexity of the buy-sell agreement should match the deal size. I've seen more than one deal blow up for this reason. Legal agreement overkill. 
It can definitely be a thing in this space. Sellers will often balk when given legal boilerplate by a buyer that was meant for deals 10 times as big. It was just used as boilerplate to cut down on legal expenses. You want the length and complexity of your legal agreement to match your deal size? You know, if they get out of whack, you can have problems. Number nine, note any seller sensitivities and communicate them to your lawyer. You probably have a sense of them by now. Sellers very often have trigger issues, something that's really important to them, something where they have no flexibility. And so you want to have a discussion with your lawyer and instruct them that when they're drafting the buy-sell agreement, that these issues are important and that we need to potentially finesse them if we can, at least make them aware of them. Number 10, delays are the enemy of getting deals closed. So we need to be prepared to respond quickly. It is very, very easy to get things dragged out in negotiating a buy-sell agreement if it's not actively and aggressively managed. So be forewarned on that as well. Number 11, be physically present on location on the signing day if possible. Not only is it good for the morale of everybody concerned, it's a lot easier to enact your closing day agenda as the new owner of the business because the signing of the buy-sell agreement is really only step one. There's three or four other things you need to do that first day as well. And being there on location, certainly going to help. Now, this is not an absolute must. Plenty of people these days are closing transactions when the buyer and seller are not in the same location. But if you can manage it, I think it is the way to go. And number 12, ensure other legal agreements are ready to go on closing day. If we have to do conveying of assets in an asset purchase agreement, or sometimes employment agreements, have a timeliness factor, leases, etc., make sure they're ready to go. Have a closing day agenda and follow it. So that's the buy-sell agreement. Our next video up is resolving final issues. Let's get after it. This is the do-it-yourself guide to business buying. And today we've been talking about the buy-sell agreement. We want to learn and grow as we go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.